and for the first time ever, a faction's mainline infantry also have a repair ability. Hey, what's going on up here? Are these mainline infantry squads repairing vehicles? And company of heroes too? Surely not. Hey guys, Tightrope here, and today we'll be taking a look at four actually new and exciting functions in Company of Heroes 3, and then we'll take a look at four areas where I think the game needs to be improved before release. Let's start out just like the Mission Alpha did with tank riding. This is an incredibly cool function, very cinematic and perhaps even useful, since historically in Company of Heroes, medium tanks have moved at slightly over twice the speed that infantry does so you will be able to ferry a squad of infantry across the map far more rapidly. I know this functionality was experimented with for Company of Heroes 2 before the Western Front armies came out, but it never saw the light of day. And the animations for tank riding are not complete yet, but I'm optimistic for this incredibly cool function. Another huge function debuting in the Mission Alpha was the ability to tow certain weapons around. In this case, the 88mm Flak 36. Being able to reposition these heavy anti-tank weapons as a completely new dynamic to the franchise. And I'm curious to see how it plays out in multiplayer. Previously, the best you could do in Company of Heroes 2 was to scuttle the Pack 43 and then rebuild it somewhere else. And even this feature was added into the game very late by the community balance team. So being able to tow these weapons around instead is very exciting. And I'm curious to see what kind of options the allies have when it comes to stealing these towed weapons once they've been decrewed. If you guys know me, then you'll know that I love a good troop transport. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he's put the assault officer in the M3. Even so far as to bring some of the most questionable build orders ever seen to tournament no, matches. Funny enough, it's so slow. It's quite questionable that he is even using it as a, a combat unit. But unfortunately, throughout Company of Heroes 2's history, they saw almost no play at a competitive level. Unless you could upgrade their weaponry, such as the quad 50 cows on the M5, or the twin flamethrowers on the 251. However, after that point, they could no longer carry troops or reinforce them, so they no longer qualify as troop transports. In Company of Heroes 3, these troop transports or supply trucks have a new function. You can recrew an unmanned team weapon directly from the vehicle itself. So this can give you a lot more flexibility and speed when recovering team weapons. This is very strong and I imagine this will help push these types of vehicles into seeing a lot more play in Company of Heroes 3. And finally we have extended control group functionality. Units can be a part of more than one control group at the same time, and this opens up a lot of opportunities to control your army more precisely. And in a game like Company of Heroes where the manner in which you control your army is so important, this is a nice feature to have. You can also easily add units to control groups using the shift key, and this lowers the number of inputs required to add a unit to a control group. Now these features might be considered standard for RTS games these days, but they are very welcome coming from Company of Heroes 2 where they are not an option. Oh, don't worry guys, it's not an earthquake. I'm just playing Company of Heroes 3. All jokes aside, I do think there is too much screen shake at the moment in Company of Heroes 3. Here you can see a Stuart light tank shooting at some infantry, causing what I consider to be quite a considerable amount of screen shake. For comparison, here's a Stuart shooting at infantry in Company of Heroes 2. No screen shake whatsoever. Now I do accept that the scale of tanks in Company of Heroes 3 are probably going to be smaller. We're not going to see copious amounts of those super heavy tanks. Thus, a light tank in Company of Heroes 3 will be closer to what a medium tank was in Company of Heroes 2. And a medium tank in Company of Heroes 2 does cause screen shake when shooting at infantry. So I tried to measure how far the screen was moving during the shake in Company of Heroes 3 and Company of Heroes 2, and it did seem to move one pixel further at the extremes in Co3, though I'm not that confident in this result. I was doing some timing to see how long the screen shake lasts in both games, and it does seem to be roughly equivalent, but I did notice this one thing. Here we can see the, again the Sherman shooting at a squad of infantry in Company of Heroes 2. You can see that the movement of the screen is quite exaggerated until you get pretty much to halfway, and then it tapers off back to normal. See that again? Big exaggerated sh shake at the start, and then a slow return to normal. We can see that again. 
with a different shot. Big shake at the start, get to halfway, and then it just slowly returns back to normal, nice and smooth. I think that might be why I'm finding these effects so jarring in Company Furious 3, because you can see it kind of just goes for like a fast shake, and then you're back to where you are. Do that at a slightly faster speed. See that? It's just a boom shake. You're shaking like quite a lot and then you're just back to normal. It's like a faster back and forth. There's no like tapering off in the shake effect. It's just it's just like a big vibration. And then you're back to uh back to normal. We'll take a look at this one. It's a penetration of a handheld weapon. See that? A big shake, but it doesn't feel like there's like a tapering off back to normal. And I actually noticed this in this as well. It seems to be changing the zoom, the screen shake. You see that? How this is, how we're getting closer and further away. So it's not just moving the screen from side to side like it did seem to in Company Furious 2. It's actually zooming in and out. So perhaps that's another reason why the screen shake feels. Uh, a lot more jarring in Company of Heroes 3 to me than it did in Company of Heroes 2. You, we're actually like zooming in and out. There's a lot more vertical motion as well, at least from all the explosions that I've seen, maybe some are more horizontal, but yeah, we seem to be zooming in and out. You can see, you know, these buildings are definitely getting closer and further away to the camera. It's not just like a straight movement up and down. Like, like maybe that's a bit more moving vertical but here we are we're kind of we're zooming in and out as part of the screen shake now so maybe that's why i'm finding it so jarring maybe that's just my personal preference but what i'm used to in company heroes too but yeah i think like this the exaggerated movement at the start and then a tapering off back to normal makes it feel maybe cleaner of movement and maybe the zooming in and out as part of the shake now is also a bit jarring to me. So the type of screen shake has definitely changed quite a lot between the two games. Here is a handheld anti-tank weapon deflecting off a tank in Company of Heroes 3, and it's causing the screen to shake. Whereas in Company of Heroes 2, the bazooka bouncing does not cause the screen to shake. Now they did add this cool deflection animation in Company of Heroes 3, so maybe they wanted to make it feel more impactful, but it does mean that the screen's going to be shaking quite a lot more often. Again, we need to look at the triggers for screen shake. Here in Company of Heroes 2, taking a shot on your medium does not cause the screen to shake, but dealing a shot to the enemy's medium does. Whereas in Company of Heroes 3, both taking a shot and dealing a shot both cause the screen to shake, potentially causing twice as much screen shake during tank fights. However, it gets worse than that because in Company of Heroes 3, enemy shots that bounce and do zero damage also cause the screen to shake. Whereas in Company of Heroes 2, bouncing a shot does not cause the screen to shake, even if that shot's coming from a huge heavy tank. So between screen shake arriving on a smaller class of vehicles, potentially being more violent, and being triggered by far more events, I feel it moves from being a cool indicator of impactful moments <laughs> Oh my god! More into the realm of being an annoyance. And it cheapens the impact of the truly huge hits that feel the same as a light tank shot bouncing. Oh, shit, me. Oh, you must go. Another issue with Company of Heroes 3 is the volume of enemy squads when they are shouting during combat. Oftentimes it feels like they are even louder than my own units. And this makes it very difficult to understand what is going on during fights with multiple units. Maybe the developers want us to feel overwhelmed during fights, but that happens naturally during Company of Heroes 2. You don't need to artificially ramp things up and get in the way of hearing important audio cues.
For comparison, there was Company of Heroes 2. You can still hear the enemies shouting out from time to time, but at a much lower volume compared to your own units. And this adds to the battle's ambience rather than overwhelming you. Another issue, it appears to be more difficult to put your infantry into cover in Company of Heroes 3. Here we have a long, light cover fence, and I can put my Panzer Grenadiers into it without too much trouble, though they are very spread out. And since they are so spread out, the squad as a whole will take a lot less damage from AoE explosions or flamethrowers. And now when I try to put the engineers behind the cover as well, because the initial squad is so spread out, the engineers are only able to get three spots with their own spacing. And for a massive fence like this, I would expect to fit two squads behind it very easily. And when I try to put the Panzer Grenadiers behind these sandbags, it takes some real fine tuning of my inputs to get them to fit properly. And for these types of inputs that you are performing potentially hundreds of times per game, you don't want this type of issue. We'll finish on a small one if you zoom in and change camera angles in Co3 and then try to reset the camera angle with a quick double backspace. The second backspace doesn't register. You have to wait until the camera has finished zooming out before the second backspace will register. Now some of you were probably hoping that I'd talk about the graphics with the brightness and contrast settings or perhaps changes to the UI, but others have already covered those topics and I personally don't have anything unique to say, so I'll leave it to them and agree that they still do need quite a lot of work. So leave a comment down below with your favourite new function and where you think the game still needs to be improved the most. And if you enjoyed this, I hope you consider coming on board as a Patreon backer.